Hi, I'm Miss Hearn. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to talk about the cardinality of sets. The number of elements in a set is called the cardinal number or cardinality of the set. We use the symbol n with the parentheses around the name of the set, like n of a, to represent the cardinal number of the set a. So for example, you might be given a set and asked to find its cardinal number. In part A here, we have the set K, and it contains the letters lowercase a, l, g, e, b, and r. So if we want to find the cardinal number, all we have to do is to count. One, two, three, four, five, six elements in the set K. So that means that the number of elements in K is six, or the cardinality of K is six. Now let's look at the set M in part B. M is the set that just contains the number two. Now don't get in a hurry when you're doing your homework and accidentally put N of M equals two because there's only one element in this set. The number of elements in M is one, so the cardinality is one. Now if you recall from our previous discussion, this symbol means the empty set. It's a circle with a line through it indicating there's nothing in that set. So that means that the number of elements is, well, what do you think? If you said zero, you're correct. The number of elements in the empty set is zero. Now let's go back to the set K for a second. I just want to point out that the set K almost spells algebra, everybody's favorite subject, but it's missing that second A, and that's because in sets we never list an element twice. Even if we did list it twice, the number of elements would still be considered to be six, because when we find a cardinality, we're counting the number of unique elements. Now some sets are finite and some sets are infinite. If the cardinal number of a set is a particular whole number, we call that set a finite set. So sets like 1, 2, 3, which has three elements, that's a finite set. Or the set 1, 2, 3, dot, 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 100 is telling you that you continue the pattern of increasing by 1 until you get to 100. So if the set starts with 1 and ends with 100, there are 100 elements in that set. So the cardinality of that set is 100. Whenever a set is so large that its cardinal number cannot be found among the whole numbers, we call that an infinite set. So you often see sets that end in the dot dot dot. They don't have any largest element listed. Those are infinite sets. So now let's take a look at an example from our My Labs homework, which is the online homework website that goes with our Mathematical Ideas 14th edition textbook. In this example, we're asked to find the cardinal number for the following sets. A is the set 108, 109, 110, 111, all the way up to 142. And B is the set 108, 110, 112, all the way up to 158. An important distinction between these two sets is the pattern that they follow. Set A actually increases by one each time, whereas set B increases by two. Anytime the increase or the pattern is more than one, it's a little bit more complicated to determine the cardinal number, but I'm gonna show you a method that you can use. First, let's start though with set A. In order to determine the cardinal number of any set or the number of elements in any set that doesn't start with one, but increases by one each time, you're gonna do the same procedure. First, you're going to compare set A to the set that starts at one, but ends with the same largest number that A has. This is easy to determine the number of elements in the set that goes from one to 142. There's gonna be 142 elements. So how is A different from that set? Well, A starts at 108, which means that A is missing the numbers one, two, three, all the way up to 107. So that means that A is missing how many elements? If you said 107 elements, you're correct. A has 107 fewer elements than the set that goes from one to 142. So we can use that to determine how many elements A has. A has 142 minus the 107 missing elements. 
which would be 35. So the cardinality of A is 35. Notice that the way that we found that was to take the largest element in A and subtract from it one less than the smallest element in A. This is something you can always do when the set doesn't start at one and it increases by one each time. Now let's look at what we can do when a set increases by more than one each time. So set B, we have a set that increases by 2. 108 plus 2 is 110, 110 plus 2 is 112, and so on. And it goes all the way up to 158. We would like to use the same techniques that we did for set A, but unfortunately this one doesn't increase by only one each time. But we can fix that. What we're going to do to determine how many elements are in set B is to compare it to a set that has the same number of elements but doesn't skip count by twos. Since the elements of B are all even numbers, we can easily divide each element by two and then make our comparison. Here's what I mean. Divide each of the numbers in set B by two. This is going to give us 54, 55, 56, all the way up to 79. The nice thing about this set is, first of all, it's the same number of elements as in set B. And second of all, it's only increasing by one each time. So we can use the same technique we did to find the number of elements in set A. So to find the number of elements in B is the same as finding the number of elements in the set 54, 55, 56, dot, 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 79. So how do we find the number of elements in that set? Well, remember, when a set increases by one each time, we're gonna compare it to the set that goes from one up to 79. So we know that it's gonna be fewer than 79 elements, but 79 minus what? For that, we need to figure out what this set is missing at the beginning. The beginning, this is missing all the elements from one up to 53. So it's missing 53 elements. 79 minus 53 is 26 elements in this set. Once again, 79 is the largest element in the set that we're counting, and 53 is one less than the smallest. But this only works when we look at a set that increases by one each time. So the answer to part B is 26. Let's look at another example. This example is a little bit different. In this case, we're finding the cardinal number for the set B and it skipped counting by how much? If you said two, you're correct. We're going up by two each time. That appears to be the pattern. We're going from 123 up to 151. So the technique that I'm going to show you is very similar to what we did on the previous slide, but notice that this time these numbers are odd numbers, which means we can't just divide it by two to make the comparison. So what we're going to do is compare this set to the set of all the numbers, one less than these numbers. So we're going to compare it to the set containing one less than 123 is 122, one less than 125 is 124, one less than 127 is 126, all the way up to one less than 151 is 150. Wouldn't you agree that these two sets have the same number of elements? So how did we, on the previous slide, find the cardinality of a set of even numbers like this. Well, what we did is we divided each number by two to get a list that didn't skip count. The problem is this still skip counts by two, but we can easily fix that. We're going to divide each element by two, which is gonna give us not the same set, but a set with the same number of elements that doesn't skip count by two. So that gives us the set 61, 62, 63, all the way up to 75. All right, so this set's nice because it increases by one each time. The only problem with this set is it doesn't start with the number one. But that's okay, we know how to deal with that, right? As long as the set's increasing by one unit each time, we just compare it to a similar set that would have one as its beginning number. So if the set went one, two, three, all the way up to 
59, 60, 61, 62, 63, and continued all the way to 75. We're going to compare these two. This one's really easy to find the number of elements. The number of elements from 1 to 75 is 75. But we're looking for the number of elements in the set B, which we've determined is the same as the number of elements in the set from 61, 62 to 75. So which elements is this set missing? It's missing all the elements from 1 up to 60. So we know it would have been 75, but it's missing 60 elements, so that means there are 15 elements in the set. Now in my labs, they have a different way of solving this problem and you can use either method, but this is the one that I like. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. That helps other students to find the video.